us this morning as well. This is what we do Monday through Friday. As long as the book is open, I know I sound like a broken record, but it's true. Okay, let's on. We got stuff to unpack, as they say. Well, ninety-four percent think there's no rate hike, and obviously yesterday's number uh, from the CPI warns that for the time being. Irregardless, irregardless. Okay, the market has totally gotten it wrong. The yield curve, what it's going to look like going forward. Do not forget, we get the dot. Plot. Every quarter, we have to see what they are saying. If there's a dramatic shift in that dot plot from hiking not to hiking, then that could be a real huge tailwind for this market. Here go. There's quad witching, rebalancing quarter, and you do the math. Okay? All over the place, right? So, overseas, API was a build. Yeah, well, Whatever. German wholesale prices, way better than expected. 2.6, way better than expected. GDP month over month uh, as expected. Uh, the UK manufacturing uh, weaker goods in trade, better, right? 90 U, better. Industrial production, worse. Manufacturing production, well, look, UK, Europe, but UK in particular is in, in, in difficult straits, right? GDP year over year, 0.5 versus 0. At least it's positive, friends. India, manufacturing, a little bit softer. Fuel year over year, way down, right? Inflation, way down. And then the food index as well, way down. All of these are positive things. Industrial production, softer than expected, our European area. And then we have here year over year, month over month. These are pretty big numbers. Now, granted, these were negative, but now these are positive. But irregardless, it's still on the soft side. Okay. Point action, 2.43, a little bit higher. Look, I mean, they're embracing um, Lagarde et al. are embracing the construct of stagflation. And they basically been pretty self evident, right, in terms of. Um, what they're most concerned with, right? And as you can imagine what that would look like, okay? Inflation. Now, we've had this dialogue for quite some time. I don't know how, when, why inflation became such an evildoer, okay? And, and globally an evildoer. When statistically, we're, all we're doing is rooting back to the historical mean. And I would argue that the quantitative easing starting in 2008, it was not sustainable, continues not to be sustainable at 2%, period, exclamation point. Okay. The, the, the central bankers need to shift the narrative from this 2% analysis, which I guess in their lifetime makes sense to them, but in reality does not. I have hundreds of years on record that says, hey, Seriously, just saying, just saying. All right, here we go, 30 year mortgage, a little bit lower, application GA up, we like to see that, right? PPI coming out, 8.30, we'll see what that looks like. See if we get a good number as well. It should be softer, I mean, but who knows, right? And then the decision, FOMC, and then the Q&A, obviously. I would be shocked if they did anything. But like I say, now, we are relying on an F minus incompetent central banker named Powell, who has not gotten it right at these Q&As for quite some time. On, on a hit rate, he's maybe, maybe at a 10% level success rate. Just say maybe at a 10%, okay? Let's see if you can do it. <laughs> I would not bet on it. So, the, the, you know, the other side of that is um, you've got all these people stuck in bonds who are frantically trying to shift, right, into, on the equity side. What could go wrong with that? Right? All right, and then we have numbers out of Australia. Okie dokie. 
extra. Well, Kroger will will be into the Adobe light, but seriously, no, maybe. Right? Uh, what do we got? Rental posts largely dropped since 2020. Rents are falling in the West, rising in other parts of the U.S. This is the one that really caught my interest. Long tech, the most crowded table. <laughs> yeah, I know. I understand. But once again, I ask the important questions. Of that long, big tech, what percentage is the top tier top targeted tech of seven, eight, right? We know the breath tells us one thing, right? Thank goodness we're starting to see this broaden out. This is what we, this is actually really healthy. And I don't mind taking from Peter to give to Paul. I really don't mind peeling off some profits to those who have been in it since twins, right? Peeling, taking some profits, okay? And looking to see where they want to put it into, okay? Short China equities. There's still short China equities, right? So we've gone from there. This is May, okay? Here to here. That's still 55%. I understand, right? I understand. Short US dollar, long Japan, right? Long T-bills, okay? Coming in. And short US banks. ta -da. Operating earnings per share. I, I really, you know, this bugs me, right? Growth versus value, as you would expect, right? Contributors to US headline CPI, gasoline down, rent or shelter up, used cars and trucks, motor vehicles, electricity. So basically rent, right? And gas, there you go. Electricity, teeny, teeny, tiny on the downside. Alphabet introduces new AI powered ad solutions to drive demand. Okay. Cool beans. So we got comment, US Federal Reserve, yada, yada, yada. Multi change in US consumer prices. No, Thursday. It is Thursday tomorrow. Oh, actually. Congratulations. I know they had the, uh, the high school. Pomp and circumstances. I know they graduated. Okay. You go have a fun day. Fun day. And I'll talk to you when we get home. Okay. Friday. Congratulations. Yes, Friday. Yes, what happens on Friday? Congratulations. Congratulations, yes. Friday? Yes. Friday. Uh, yes, I right, go 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 have fun. Congratulations, son. <laughs> All right, Liz, what do we got? What do we got? Energy. So the flip, right? I don't see any. <laughs> What's wrong? China's domestic stock market is still in a bear market for liquidity. Yeah, they got to... gonna. This is just the beginning, right? So we'll see how things play out. I don't know what to tell you. I really don't. AI related stocks. I'm in this um, box. And well, you know, I mean, AI and all this other stuff. Anyways, but we'll see. We'll see how things play out. Gonna be a little bit sloppy choppy. It's gonna be kind of like Lotto Friday, speed dating, pop, take your profits before they start take, getting out of stuff before the FOMC. You know the drill. Spot will go over the rules of engagement. Apple is kind of interesting. Well, from peak, the pullback. But what makes you think we have a peak? I mean, this is the funny part about this. If you look at this, yeah, well, we did have a pullback and then went back higher. But even from when this started right here, it still went up. Yeah, I don't know. It's Whatever. Right. Lincoln, China, Cuba. Okay. Let's see how that plays out, right? Inflation May retreats, we know. AI boom propels an ending to the one trillion dollar club. One of Donald Trump's last uh, oh, whatever. <laughs> Russian soldiers surrendered to a Ukrainian drone. Wow. 
and as a Nordic NATO chief. Trans Taxi Prince is taking on Uber and winning. Modelo a special overtook Bud Light as the top. So I don't want to talk about this. Wealth buyers are turning the once impoverished Puglia into one of Italy's hottest home workers. Okay, cool. This is what we're talking about today, friends. Uh, AMD, a pause before the real AI rip. I agree with this. Look, I mean, um, yeah, I'm just falling out. Trim, uh, time to trim, rating downgrade, whatever. Electric vehicles can take a victory. I mean, we're still getting bought up, right? You still see that. I mean, it's really fun. Drags, manage care after comments on medical costs. Okay, this is coming from a CEO, right? Amazon Web Services ways using AMD's new AI chip. Cool. Skip June high. Well, I don't know. Market all along in the July Fed move is the market. I don't know. We'll have to take a beat. But skip, we know. Bye bye. Have a good one. Central Bank nudges the recovery. How the ship could save stocks, yada, yada, yada. Don't forget it. That would also help other industrial metals and stuff. There's quantitative easing going on. I don't know what they're going to do, but. China. Millionaires keep leaving outflows may be more damaging than usual. Okay. Can't say no to that. Good days on coming back. China economic downturn takes a toll, probably. Okay, here we go. Let's talk. 94%. I mean, this is not market science. Okay. This is what we have to look at right now, right? As you can see. Good. Still, we're still sticky. Okay, so if we do nothing, well, we'll have to see, right? Whether we get any, we're not really gonna get anything projected. If you look at July, okay. Okay, 500. The factoring in a rate hike for next month. And then watch the dot plot, please. Here's the chart. Let's see if this shifts, okay, down earlier. Okay. And we'll see. Close. NVIDIA, 57 orders, $16 million. Tesla, 34 orders, 14.3. You can have a little bit of Amazon spy, not a yada yada. Q, 41 orders, hatching, spy, 40 orders. Uh, this is so complex. Like I said, some of the stuff going through here is really complex because, well, squad witching slash quarterback. So, I, you know, I, I guess the only thing that I can say that makes sense to me as a share is don't read too much into things. Now, if you're looking at something like a Nicola, a plug, or, you know, something like that, right, that's a different narrative because that's a mean type retail thing. But don't forget, normally the volume, high volume doesn't get rolled over sometimes. But in these smaller names, the statistical probability is higher that it does, as opposed to Tesla, NVIDIA, and stuff like that that are day traded right now. All right, nothing really sexy going on right now. Okay. The only one that was really fun was this AKYA, which I am in. How can you not when everybody's buying it? I'm in the Nikola, the one calls, but I went out to 2025. <laughs> Right, and then we have here tied to options, options, flex was not. So it was a sell, sell, so I want to leave right? Okay, we had a lot of initiations today. Deck Crocs, I really like this Crocs setup right now. I'm still accumulating it, FYI. Sweet greens, okay. So what happens is, well, this one analyst from Piper Sandler, Brian, Pizza, Jack, QSO, right? Restaurant brands, right? Yum. So basically he upgraded, well, initiations to neutral, but also did, but not, not sexy price targets, right? Now did get, okay, 18%, 68%. I mean, we've got some new people coming in, right? BTIG, no ranking because they're new. Let's see what's going on here. 
no real studs or studettes, downgrades. BLTP, that's interesting because that was getting a lot of call buying, BMO. 49% from market perform to under. And then let's take a peek at some of our peeps here. CNK, right? here's a nice one. Play, Dave and Busters, this was just, <laughs> I was done a lot on this one. I mean, like, a lot. And now I'm up. Nicely. Okay. I mean, when you, I mean, when you get a, like an 18% move, it's nice, right? Anyways, watch Krispy's cream, right? No real PTLO, Portillo's, I'm in this one as well as a swing. That's working well for me. So the, all of these are starting to get money flows back. Shack attack, we haven't talked about that in a long time. Shake Shack, right? Here we go, IQVIA, uh, Amazon for the next month, June to July, has strong seasonality, Abbott Labs. Anything new? No, not really. Amazon, no, 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 that's not important. No, 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 United Healthcare, whoops. And then we got that. I'm actually gonna be buying some, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do yet. I, I might buy some longer dated calls on uh, unit. Polysigna is what the one I go after. Right? S&P 500 cycle from a one year low, boop, to a one year high, boop. And what does it mean going back to 1933? Bullish. But, you know, no matter what, it, as you can see, okay, statistically, you know, when you look at all the averages, here's 30%, 22%, and you have some mud run, 40% possibility, right? It's averaging 13% move going forward, okay? And you can see uh, going back to 1950, same narrative, right? At the index cycles on Antonio and less than 5% of the stocks at the high. Less than 5% of stocks are at a high. That is absolutely positively. Look how many times this has happened in the past. Not a whole hell of a lot, right? What does it mean? Still bullish, but still 5%. This is why the index is broken, right? Because you've got this misrepresentation of the PE multiple of the S&P as a function of the weightings of these stocks. See what I'm saying? Here's the same thing, anyways. You have to understand, you cannot take anything at face value when you're seeing unprecedented transactions. At macroeconomics. We are in unprecedented macroeconomics. Corporate insider velocity is starting to pick up. This is what we want to see. It had slackened off. You can see now it's ripping to the upside. Okay. You can see two months later. Oh, this is important. Okay. This is insider buying, insider buying, insider buying. It is a huge tailwind when you see insiders buy. South Beach will talk about it. This is a no-brainer. If you've got a host of people saying, hey, they want to buy here, it goes higher. I mean, seriously, it goes higher. Look at this, two months later, just saying. In correction percentage, this is just, this is just remarkable. Industry percentage of industries in bear mortgages, look at this. This is crazy town. Another tailwind. Gamma exposure. Another tailwind. I mean, this is just, how can you, this is where we say this at nauseum. You cannot pick a top. You, you have a better risk reward percentage on a picking. Of, do you notice? Okay. I, I look for A plus plus setups to buy, okay? I look at double tops to trim. I don't short, okay? I might put some hedges on. This is the big mistake. People are still, the rhetoric is still crazy bearish. I got my, my, my planetary guy. He was adding to his shorts nonstop yesterday. I mean, crazy. 
Rosy, we like it. Rosy, 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 nice. So we're seeing it broadening out. Remember, we only had one Rosy in XLK. Now we're starting to get more rosiness. And here you go, XLY. That should be no brainer. I mean, this this won't take much of a pullback at all. None of this. Because of where we are, this is basically the front end, right? If we go out 10 days, guess what? Okay? You go out five days, right? You can see, right? But I don't, it, it, intraday, one day, you can even go out, you know, this is obviously the, what it looks like with the breath, right? This is what it looks like. Okay, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Yoko. Obviously steepening. Look, I don't. And obviously, obviously, these rates are up across the board. Okay. You can see here, this is the, this is, I want to see if I can get the Chinese balance sheet on here. I don't think it updates, so I do have it on here. China. No. Mm -hmm. Anyways, these are the assets. Here's the GDP, right? So all of these, you know, we talk and we talk and we talk and we talk, okay? This is the um, recession probability index. This is it right here. <laughs> uh, production is flattening. We need another spike in that. Here's the rates and stuff. And so you can see how this all plays out, right? Okay. Okay, I have no idea. Here's the 210. This is, this is, this we're back to Great Depression, Burns, Volcker area. Right? See what happens. You know, if this continues to go down, you know the narrative, like money's coming out of bonds, where's it gonna go? It's not going into cash. <laughs> I mean, if my, the, 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 these institutions have been so wrong in terms of their weightings, it's it's not even funny. And twins can attest to this. We all could look, we all know this to be true. They started out the year at 60 40, 60% bonds, 40% equity. Okay. And they were crazy ass light to, on the Texan, right? Large cap, right? Are you going to buy at these levels? in NVIDIA or something like that. No, we still see, say, okay, there's a look, I screwed up. I, I have some on, but I'm not gonna buy up here. What are we, we seeing? We seeing them buy some of these beaten down names, okay, that they say, okay, I'm willing, like, we've got, you know, Portello, we got Dave and Busters, we got all those starting to rally. We've got, you know, Dollar General, we got some of these that were taken to the widget starting to rally. You know, th this is what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, you know me, I'm in the Medtronics. I did buy, I did buy, you would be proud, not a lot, but I am an ISOJ twins. You took that two by four and you smacked me on the head. Let me know if you, um, what you do on UNH, okay? I, I, I think, I don't know, I have to see what the, the options are out to uh, 2025 on that one, okay? Here's the 10 three month, right? So this is interesting, right? So the yield curve here, right? Is steepening, not inverting. So we're getting a bounce on that. See how that plays out, right? The front end there. Here's the two five. Here's the 10 year, two year. We're in a massive range. Irregardless, friends, the volatility in bonds is unprecedented. And there is, but this is the present and future, right? Because of the um, um, where we are in terms of trading. Look, I'm a dinosaur. I mean, I started in the late 1970s. I'm a dinosaur, okay? This is the present and future. You get these phenomenal, and that's why when you have a master technician like Spartan, 
my eyes just glaze over, glaze over because I'm a Delta queen. The queen of Delta? No, no I guess queen of Delta. I didn't know. So here's the, uh, watch this. I have seen, believe it or not, some accumulation on the call side in this. I don't know what to tell you, but I got my hedges on and I'm happy. Here's the 10 year China. Um, still a massive H on the monthly, right? But we are holding this pivot. So let's see what happens here, right? And here's German rates. You can see here, probably gonna flag out dollar. Breaking down here, notable, but irregardless, I mean, look, you've got a really, 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 really smart dude looking at the demise of the dollar, and I wouldn't be upset by that, to be honest with you. But I've been talking about this in terms of deglobalization, but even more than that, decoupling, right? They cannot get out of this decoupling. Is, uh, they can't get out fast enough, right? They do not want to be in the US dollar, period, exclamation point. China, still weakening. Cryptos, who cares, but clean, red, right? Commodities, let's take a beat. All right, so today, do, 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 looks like 70% green. Uh, Agra is on the downside here, soybean. Cocoa's up, London cattle, sugar's up. Okay, feed of cattle's up and this has not updated yet. Oats are down and then you can see here all the industrial metals. Yay, this is where I'm in. I told you this, I was accumulating. Nickel, copper, zinc, aluminum, I'm in all this. I'm in steel, everything, right? You know, I'm in platinum. I'm in some palladium, right? Okay. It just makes sense in this cycle. Okay, why? Quantitative easing in China equals infrastructure building. Nothing. Our infrastructure needs to be taken care of too, somewhere along the line, okay? When you basically have an electric grid by 2030, the vat, a large percentage will have to be taken off because of age. What are you gonna do? I'm just asking, what are you gonna do? DBC, nice. I'm long this equity as well, some options on that. I'm really not aggressive in this one because I have so many other things on right now. Natty gas, Ooh, watch for a breakout here. Now, some people may say that it's not doing much, okay? But I can tell you, this week alone, it's moved almost 8%, okay? I, you know, I'm just saying. And if it starts to break out, guess what? We're probably going up to, in my head, I can see us going up to here. And that'd be 25% move, let's do it. I don't have a big position on, but I might, we can get out of this cluster. It keeps coming back. We keep making higher lows, right? That's a bullish narrative, right? All right, so we'll have to see what's gonna happen here with the numbers that come out. Shout them out when you can, or I'll go back, doesn't matter, boil. Okay, we're still, this is interesting. We, I, I can't really do anything. We have to break this down to my night, you can see it. I don't know. Anyways, you can see there's a downtrend line. It's a triangle. Right? So. Here's crude, net of gas. Okay. So, consolidative, which is interesting. This actually looks a little bit more, we're in the lower quadrant, right? So we can't do anything right now. But if we start to break down here, this does have some room. And that would be uh, net of gas flipping. Okay, we still have this stick state going on down here on the weekly. A huge range, right? We're almost at the mid of this range. Nothing to be done there. Here we go. PPI down, core PPI. A little bit higher, core PPI softer, PPI year over year 1.1. Well, that's a bullish number. <laughs> this help, don't forget, producer price index, businesses less, more profits, right? <laughs> Off we go.
Uh, let's take a look here. What's going on here? Right. Look at that. See how that plays out in the back. Nice. Nice, 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 nice little pop in my PL just came in. Watch the uh, oil names, guys, stuff like that. Keep an eye on those. And obviously, bonds, gold, but gold can't do anything until. Yeah, yeah, I just, yep, just showed it out. Just shout it out, my friend. Okay, this is bullish, right? Stable. That may flip. Let's just for shits and giggles. Let's take a look here. Um, no, I don't want that. Like this. Let, just for shits and giggles. Let's see if there's going to be a shift. Okay. Right. See what what we're watching for right now to see if there's going to be a shift down for next month in terms of rate hike. Okay. These guys are so incompetent. They don't know what the hell they're doing. This is bullish for commodities as well. Gold, let's see what happens here. Well, keep an eye on silver. It's an industrial metal. I've been acquiring um, the leveraged one. Um, for those of you who like to follow me, ACQ, still starting a position on it. We'll see how that plays out. All right, what do we got? What do we got? Oh, okay, Dow is down. Small caps are up slightly. Fixes down, tax up a little bit, right? Across the board, Europe overseas is up. Swiss is down, right? Ivo Vespa, Brazil, up. Hang Seng down. Nifty 50, up. Bank Nifty down. DAX about to break out. Uh, so this is the Dow transports, because, you know, you know why. Look, I'm old. Okay. I believe in um, not, <laughs> I shouldn't say settled law. I should say settled macro um, facts. Keynesian theory. Okay. Dow Jones transports are crazy as important. I'm in the transportation, that ETF. I'm in FedEx. What more? I'm in some uh, rail names as well. Okay. Um, yeah. See how that plays out. Okay. So this is what I'm looking at. The Dow transports against the SPY. We have a meaningful low that goes all the way back to 2021. Okay. Bouncing. This is a big stop. Here are the transports also. So this is where, you know, how does she get these crazy ass ideas? I literally look at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of spreads, okay? And I, and, and, and I say, okay, here's another thing. Remember how I showed you small cap yesterday, right? Here's another thing, job transports. We're at a key pivot point, okay? Going back years, okay? This is not, you can't assume it's gonna break. This is where A++, okay? I actually need, this is a monthly chart, okay? So I actually need a green candle, right, on this, because it's a monthly chart. Buggy the DAX, Fez. Here's the Fez, beautiful flag out coming. VEA, this is the Vanguard, developed markets, small caps. That's about to break out. EFA, guess what? We'll curl up, out she goes. EFA, IWM, oh, this is really interesting, okay? Um, this is, it got to the 50%, 38.2%. I, you know, I really thought this would have gone lower. Keep an eye on that one. You know, I don't know what to make of that. This is a Chinese small caps, ECNS. Keep an eye on this one. This one actually could get moving. Um, I might buy a little bit of it. Just for shits and giggles. EFA, small caps against the Chinese small caps. Just thinking out loud, maybe. IWM, ECNS, small caps, China. Okay, keep an eye on this one. CQQQ. I actually meant some CQQQ. 
Now, how did I play it? I actually played it with equity. Uh, the problem that with some of these ideas, if, if, if it's almost, it's really hard uh, on the option side because it, it, you don't have the time. You just don't have enough time. All right, so here's QQQ, CQQ. Look at this, this double top, triple top is still holding. Keep an eye on this one. So what could cause this? Well, QQQs don't, well, obviously, China rips would be one way, right? Clearly, right? Another way would be that um, CQQQs rally slowly, but the Qs come in a little bit. I mean, you know the, you know the drill, it's a spread. It's mathematics, right? Here's FXI, double bottom here, looking good, feeling good. Look, you know, it's really hard to get investors to invest in China. It's really hard. But all I can tell you is at this point in time, I, I don't have any hedges on in my China portfolio. So, you know, normally I'm in Yang. I'm out of Yang. I haven't been in Yang now for a couple of weeks. Well, you know, but see, I'll play a little piggies down here. Yeah, Roger. And guess what? They're not going to cut their prices either. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Okay. Hey, shares. So this is the financials. Keep an eye on this, right? Looks like I want to, if I see some calls, I'm going to follow it because last time I saw call swoops on Asia's, well, obviously talking about China, um, it really ripped. Okay. So that was smart money. So the, very few play it. Okay. The one they like to play is K Web and FXI. Okay. Double bottom here. Let's see if it starts to break this down. Trend line. This is an, well, a quantitative easing. I know, but quantitative easing. That's what I have to say. K Web A shares. Interesting. It looks like K Web's trying to break out here. MCHI. Double. So this is not rocket science. Everybody has a double bottom on the monthly. Okay. And you're making higher lows. Okay. Not rocket science. So this is MCHI and this is K Web. Okay. Let's see the spread here. So K Web is the strongest right now. His chicks. I love the name of this. This is the consumer discretionary. Keep an eye on this one. I might buy a little bit of this one as well. Little chicks along with my CQQQ. All right. Here's FXI against chicks. Interesting, got a little bit of a double top here, friends. So watch that, chicks. Okay. I'm gonna buy a little bit for my one of my portfolios when the market opens. I'll just have a limit order in there, okay? So this is how I come up with ideas, okay, and where I wanna be placed. All right, here's EEM, okay. The sky did not fall. And once again, Taiwan Semi is the largest holding of EEM. This was a record short. I haven't seen anyone unwinding these EEMs yet. Okay, they may be, what they might be doing is just um, doing the equity, okay? Or just buying Taiwan Semi. Okay, we'll see. This is why um, being lemmings is a dangerous thing in some, because I, we're not, I, why do I say that? Uh, let's take a look here. Right. When we had the top in 2021, this is when all institutions basically said, I'm selling, right? literally, I'm selling, okay? How long do you think this thing is going to go? I mean, seriously. This is why it makes sense if you're selling at the high. 
as in all time highs, it doesn't make sense when you're going crazy ass. Okay, I right, you did do that off of these EMA resistance, but you know how many bottoms do you need on this thing on a monthly before you start saying maybe not? Yeah, and keep an eye on this one. It's curling up nicely. I'm not in it, but I might get grab a little bit of it. Bobalicious. This is a weekly, okay? One, two, three, four, five, six. Lots of lots of lots of lows here, right? You can see that. Right? See what happens. Lots of resistance as well. It has to get to, but but you had me at W. See what happens here. Just saying. Why not? Baba K Web. Interesting. So it's equal for the most part. So you can be in K Web and Baba. Baba Baidu. Baba taking it on the chin against Baidu. This is important stuff going on here, friends. Keep an eye on this. Really important. So if we break this, then we should basically get down to here, right? So that's the reason why I say that is because if you look at it from a price perspective, it's 25% outperformance of Baidu against Bobalicious. Here's Baba against FXI. You can see it's starting to bounce there. Bobalicious against CQQQ. Nothing exciting there. Let's see where my JD, here's my JD. Bobalicious against JD. It's going all over. I prefer JD over Bobalicious right now. I've mentioned this, okay? It's just more of a valuation term. Yeah. Well, shout it out. What you doing, my friend? I will follow you. Enjoy following you. Oh my goodness gracious, nice little pop there on. Small caps. All righty, Beth, ready to pop on here. Sorry, I had to read you my notes there. I accidentally deleted them. Not a problem, sir. All right, guys, what's going on? Morning. Let me just pop up the uh, the screen share here. We'll get right into it. And uh, yeah. Start going here. So if you guys are new to chat, have already done so, make sure to click on that uh, Discord link that's emailed. So you're going to pop in chats and look something a little bit like this. First area to go to when you guys do come in is this disclaimer section. Click on that, give it a read, as well as go to the new to chat information section, scroll to the very, very top. Top of the section, you got a link to the uh, disclaimer as well as this bolded risk reward section. Super important to understand both. Continue to scroll down. We have summary of how this chat works, breaks, and all these channels work on the left hand side. So you can probably navigate the chapter of the day. That is important. So nobody be looking. Continue to scroll down. We have the uh, how to read alerts on the options and equity side, breaking down how to read alerts on both sides. Pretty straightforward in that regard. Continue to scroll down. We have the uh, Spartan options rules that I like to use Monday to Thursday for myself in regards to the options ideas. Uh, as well as the SPX rules right below there that we use every single day. Continue to scroll down. Uh, any with a small account less than 10K, break it down if you do a smaller account less than 10K. Here's some rules. If information discipline you can put in place, you have a better chance of growing that smaller account, in our opinion. I pick ideas from an option directly perspective below that, which basically breaks down how to overlay your own criteria on top of the ideas. So you're left with only things that make sense for you and your account. Probably the second most important thing in trading. And um Lastly, high conviction, small account uh, trades post in that section, which we're doing a SBX credit spread every single day. And uh, yeah, if you do one, pays for the, pays for the, uh, the room uh, monthly. So it's, uh, you know, it's worth checking those out. Uh, continue, so uh, sorry, guys, click on the uh, pre-market tickers on watch. What do we got going on today? Testing amount of UNH, AMD, TM, what's up? Testing gapping up continuation from last day, humanity gapping uh, down in sympathy with UNH. UNH, United have slumps, rival insurers follow on worries over rising medical costs. Uh, AMD bouncing up in continuation from last day's little pullback into the close. TM gapping up um, in regards to their EV news, I guess, with their um, the range. And then WISA gapping up um, on volume for retail. Let's take a look at these names from a technical standpoint intraday. So first couple of names we're looking at today, guys, going to be the, oops, going to be uh, Tesla, going to be Humana. So let's rip through these charts. I'm going to be kind of stretched for time here, which is going to be... I'll go, I'll go as much as I can, though. All right, let's let's uh, let's take a look at Tesla here. The Tesla guys obviously continuing to grind higher. Looks great. 
Well, remember how I said uh, I want Tesla to 260 in two weeks? We're there. It's only been a week, but there's a price target hit uh, 266.70. Pivot to the upside. Level holds 273.10 to 281.83. Unable to hold, we look for a pullback on Tesla towards 256.22. That level breaks 247.30 downside, leaning bullish, looking for a continuation push to the upside today. If Tesla can hold that uh, pivot level, get above it today. We'll see what happens, but look, looks good. Uh, Humana, let's take a look at this. We are at the bottom end of that range. Four seventy one forty pivot to the downside today. Levels unable to hold four sixty three twenty two to four fifty four seventeen. Able to hold, we look for a push towards the um, four eighty eighty one to four ninety sixty three on the upside. Overall, on Humana, going to be leaning bearish for so continuation lower today. If that pivot point is unable to hold, that's Tesla. That is Humana. Let's take a screenshot of these two. Let's move on to the next. All right, next two guys we're looking at. UNH and AMD. Oh yeah, get those levels there. All right, let's take a look at UNH. This is gonna be, let me get rid of. Four fifty seven seventy one pivot to the downside today. Level holds four forty nine sixty five. Unable to hold four thirty eight seventy one. Able to hold four sixty three seventy two to four seventy one ninety on the upside overall. In UNH going to be getting bearish looking for continuation lower. If that pivot point is unable to hold, looks quite heavy. Um, both UNH and Humana are trading at their weekly range lows, so don't love the look of that. <clears throat> Let's take a look at uh, AMD pushing back up. 12769 pivot level holds 13082 to 13334. Unable to hold. We look for a pullback towards 12491. 12287 downside leading bullish and neutral there. Looking for a continuation push higher. Overall on AMD, you know, it's holding its range. Looks pretty decent for continuation to the back to the upside. So we'll see what happens in that regard. That's UNH. That is AMD. Let's take a look at the next two, my friends. So we have uh, a, a TM and WUSA.
164.96 pivot level holds 167.77 to 170.87 unable to hold 162.01 157.77 going to be getting bullish looking for a continuation push to the upside today if that pivot point can hold that is tm let's take a look at am or sorry, let's uh, take a look at what's up oh damn nice move this thing could get going I, i've been in this thing for a little bit of time we should probably check So pivot to the upside today is going to be that level right there. The uh, 194, as you see the levels, uh, 194 level hold, 265, 353, unable to hold 149 to 113 on the downside. I'm going to be leaning bullish if we can get back above that pivot. Pivot's the 50 MA on the daily. So we'll see what happens in that regard. Um, it's got quite a bit of room off the lows. It's a low flow reverse split uh, name from, I guess, pretty recent, maybe a couple months ago. But uh, yeah, we'll see what happens in that regard. So that's TM and that is what's up. All right, let's take a look at the spine of Fang. So market guys still looks good on the daily. Um, quite a bit of room higher here. Obviously we've got FOMC today, so we're gonna see what happens in that regard. It is slightly extended on the daily to the upside. But again, does that really matter with uh, FOMC? No. Uh, 438.23 pivot to the upside today. Levels able to hold 450 or 441.59. Unable to hold 434.23. Pretty much we got range both ways. Uh, Going to be leaning bullish for now out the gate, looking for a little bit of a grind higher. I think we can squeeze. If FOMC comes out, we're, uh, we get a positive move. I think we're going to get a pretty big move to the upside, like a pretty big squeeze. I think shorts are in a bind here. Um, and if not, we obviously have quite a bit of room down to fill that gap to around like 130, uh, 433 there. So leaning bullish for now, but uh, we'll see what happens on FOMC. That's the coin toss. I don't know what's going to happen. Let's take a look at Apple. So Apple guys still uh, sitting in its um, weekly range near the highs. This level holds 183.38. This level is able to break 184.46 and able to hold 182.17 on the uh, downside. Overall, going to be leading bullish, looking for a continuation push to the upside today. That's Apple. Amazon, 127.10. Pivot holds, 128.80 to 130, 131.72. Unable to hold 125.36 to 122.28 on the downside, leading bullish, looking for a continuation push to the upside today if that pivot point is able to hold. Take a look at Netflix. We like to look at Amazon quite a bit, actually. The daily looks pretty good. Four thirty nine ninety pivot level holds four fifty eight sixty four and able to hold four twenty eight eighty nine four seventeen eighty seven on the downside overall going to be leading bullish on that name there. Let's take a look at Meta. So Meta is still trying to break that weekly range to the upside. The pivot today, 267.09. Level holds 277.05. Unable to hold 264.59. I'm actually going to be leaning more on the bearish neutral side, looking for it to slightly pull back if that pivot point is unable to hold. And that, and then last but not least, guys, we'll take a quick look at Google here, and then I'll pass it over to South Beach. All 
All righty, let's take a look, Google. Sorry for the misprint candle, guys. It's kind of hard to look at, but it is what it is there. 123.84 level holds, 125.25. Unable to hold 122.44 downside, leaning bullish, neutral, looking for a continuation push higher today if that pivot point's able to hold. So that's a spy, that's a thing. Those are the individual names that we're looking at today, guys. Going to go ahead and pass it over to Selby to type up that pre-market action plan. And I will uh, talk to you shortly. Selby Chavretti, she's all yours for now, my friend. Okay, good morning, guys. All right, so uh, Fed Day, right? Let's see, Fed Day, Hump Day, and we had PPI. So a lot of stuff this morning. Let's see how it's affecting things. Uh, let's start with the bonds, 378. So basically, it's in a really, really, really tight trading range for, I don't know, better part of a, a week and a half, two weeks. Okay. Uh, short end of the curve moving a little more than the longer end. Uh, so one's down, what, 0.055, the two years down 462. So we got what on the spread? Um, to 85. So basically high end of recent uh, of the recent uh, spread, right? Um, short end of the curve is staying really, you know, stubbornly high. And we'll see if the Fed has anything to say about that this morning. Uh, London um, rates are down a little bit, not significant after the big rise yesterday in the short end of the curve. They gave back down that side about half of the move. Okay. So on the long end, pretty stable. Uh, Germany rates are very quiet today, as are the rest of the EU. All right. 10 year in Japan, 0.43. We know that. And that's about it on the bond market. Okay, let's look at commodities. We have oil up a little bit this morning at 70 something. I saw a blurb yesterday, the government wants to replace some of the um, uh, SPR. We'll see if they do. Um, natural gas flatlining for change. Uh, gold and silver, gold's up a little bit, half a, half of, uh, half a percent. Copper's quiet. Let's see how copper looks. Is it, yeah, it's moved up from the lows. Uh, listen, I like copper a lot because I don't, it doesn't appear as a recession is coming, and that's kind of sort of why. Um, what else do we have? Agricultural commodities in trading ranges, bottom of ranges, no real change there at all. Currency wise, dollars down against North America, down against the yen, uh, down against the Chinese currency, but we are at 715. This is based on the PPI and, you know, knowing that we're not going to raise rates. Uh, today and you know all likelihood anyway uh 108 and 126 are the handles in the uh euro and the pound both down dollars down slightly against that and that's that and then we got crypto so uh weaker dollar stronger crypto right so bitcoin's up a half a percent and ethereum's up 0.3 and that's that and let's look at the foreign markets so we got the FTSE up 0.4, the DAX up 0.4, and Nikkei's up one and a half percent thing has been rocking, right? We had a really crappy, what, Tuesday and Wednesday, then it popped on Thursday and Friday and Monday and today and yesterday. So really nice moves there. Um, China's basically flat, as is Hong Kong's down a half percent, and where's Taiwan? Flat. So maybe semis are getting tired because Taiwan's flat. All right, that's, that's the um, backdrop. So we have the Fed meeting today. Where's Powell, Powell gonna come out, okay? The market is saying we're not gonna raise rates. I think that's probably accurate. We're at what, 95% chance that they do nothing and a 5% chance that they raise a quarter of a point. Okay, so what's gonna be, he's got a news conference afterwards. I would think he's gonna draw a bonnet you know, fairly hawkishly saying, you know, this is a wait and see, we'll see what's what, we can raise rates, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think he's, you know, based upon what we saw last time when he first started raising rates, he gave a reason for not raising rates as he wanted everyone to come back to work, right? This is not the um, voice of a guy who's not care about unemployment rate going high, 
So I think he's going to be, you know, cautious from here. We'll see. I think he'll only raise if he has to. And I don't know how it's going to play out, of course, but we'll see. All right. Um, with China slumping, I think the odds are greater that we hang out. OK, because if there are two engines to global growth and one of them is kind of got in the repair shop, you would think that the global GDP would be muted because of that. And so maybe that's helping us on the inflation front. But I think, you know, he does nothing and he talks hawkishly. And I think the market, you know, it'll it'll react however it reacts. OK, first move is always the wrong move. Wait for the second move. And we'll see what's what. I'm not going to predict which way it's going to go because I have no idea. All right. I kind of have a feeling what he's going to say, but how the market reacts, it reacts how it reacts and we'll react accordingly. OK, so that's the Fed. China, um, there's a few things out there in the notes, so I'll go over those later, as will uh, I will in Russia. Oil market, we discussed crypto, we discussed Mr. Market. You no, know, it wasn't a whole lot of trends in yesterday's market, to be honest. Um, Fang was pretty good. High E, high P E. Is that right? Sorry. E V was the was the main group, right? Based on that Toyota stuff. Okay, materials were strong, also. All right, a lot of materials needed for this E V rollout and what have you. Uh, the banks had a decent day, the hospitals had a good day, and the airlines had a pretty good day, as did the cruise lines. So travel and leisure was okay. Hospitals, EV was the main group and materials, the way I saw it. Schwab sees revenue decline and the stock's not going down. Mm -hmm -hmm. Interesting. Bad news, good action. You know that's what I look for. Okay, so that's that. on. Uh, on uh, Mr. Market and what's working. Tech is working, semis are working, being long is working, what's not working, being short. Being short and stubborn or not being invested, okay? A lot of funds are getting their tushy spanked on this one, all right? Because it happened really quickly and they didn't have a time to react. And listen, when we came into the year, what was the narrative for every one of these macro economists, you know, macro market guys? We're going to have a shitty first half, and then we'll be good in the second half. Okay, so they all got it wrong. Okay, pretty much. And a couple of them got it right, but by and large, they got it wrong, which they always do. All right, so that's that. All right, so Fed Day we discussed, right? Um, won't He won't rule out further increases like that. No surprise there. Uh, he's, what, 10... 10 um, hikes in a row, something like that. So this will be the first pause. Uh, should be interesting. Uh, Ukraine, same old shit, okay? They're claiming that they're, the offensive is, you know, having partial success. P Putin is saying no success. They're saying a thousand Ukrainian men are dying every day. Um, they're saying that Ukrainian um, farm output could take 20 years to recover. Now they, they're uh, bombing Odessa again. Uh, the place is a complete mess. And who's going to pay for the rebuild? This is a real problem, OK? Um, when they rebuild, guys, you can rest assured that prices of things like lumber and steel are going to go up because you have to rebuild basically a country. All right, which is going to take a lot of resources. Um, so that should be interesting as well. Um, the head of the Chechen forces was wounded. Uh, supposedly two German leopard tanks were captured. There's no proof of that. Germany doesn't know anything about it. Ukraine hasn't said anything. Russia hasn't said anything. Who the hell knows? Does it really matter? Um, EU is charging Google with anti-competitive practices in the ad tech. They may want uh, them to split or spin off a certain division. Um, you know, that ain't happening, right? So they'll pay a little bit of a fine and that'll be that. Um, AWS is having problems this morning. That's Amazon's cloud division. We've seen this before. It happened once and you couldn't get prices on stocks. So I'm a little 
curious about how this plays out, but they're having issues. Mortgage demand was up 6% this week. Rates ticked slightly lower, 677 versus 681. Uh, mortgage applications are down 41% year over year. All right, that's that, right? China's real estate slump um, predicted to last uh, for years to come. Goldman is saying that any recovery will be L-shaped, so they see the market getting smashed and then going sideways, uh, maybe a little bit of a recovery. Um, if this, if this um, continues, it could affect China's economy in a big way. So we'll see how they this plays out. They they're you know easing credit and easing um, you know the access to capital, hoping that this will stem the um, you know some of the problems in real estate, and we'll see how it plays out. Okay, um, but they have you know we've seen this on sixty minutes what ten years ago that their real estate sector was fugazi and they were building buildings and they had cities with no people in them and all this other stuff. Um, so that's continuing. Uh, Trump pleaded not guilty, 37 federal, 37 counts, and then right afterwards he went to a um, a fundraiser. And uh, I just don't understand the Republicans. He cannot win, so why are they backing this guy? I have no idea. He can't pull a swing state, and a lot of the big money guys are pulling away from him. Okay, we saw uh, the Koch brothers, we saw that guy from Texas, et cetera, et cetera. Toyota um, hit a, uh, another high today, up another 5% on this new um, um, battery they're doing for EV, rolling out some cars in 2026, full-blown, uh, you know, lineup by 2030. So that, you know, had positive effects on... Um, these uh, EV stocks yesterday. I think, it, as I said a bunch of times, it's a game changer. The PGA Commissioner Moynihan all of a sudden has sick leave. Okay. What can you say? Okay. Do I think he's sick? No. Do I think he's hiding? Yes. All right. And if I were him, I'd hide too. That should be embarrassed. Uh, AMD new chip. Okay. It's going to compete with um, NVIDIA's chip. You know, I read that the, this chip that they're going after, I, I don't know if it, this could be right. Maybe it was a misprint. $30,000 for one chip. Could that possibly be true? I don't know. But anyway, um, everybody likes AMD this morning for the most part. Okay, it had a, uh, came in a little bit yesterday. But anyway, is that possible, guys? $30,000 for a chip or is that a misprint? I have no idea. Oil demand is set to peak this decade, you know, when the EV, um, with the EV situation, uh, um, we'll see. I think, you know, I think they're probably right, okay? And um, that's why these guys aren't investing heavily, right? Because they know it as well as anybody else, all right? So the short term, we know, but, the, you know, they're saying oil peaks this decade, all right? Google, backlash. Three days back to work rule and tracking badges. You know, the uh, employees are not happy about that one. Uh, Citibank is saying the S&P is going to 4,000. They don't believe in this rally. And that's why the rally keeps going up, guys. All right, that's the reason. Okay, there's all these guys on the sidelines. PPI, okay, came in minus 0.3 versus expectations of minus 0.1 month over month, year over year, one point uh, pretty much in line. Core was pretty much in line, two, two, actually in line, and year over year, 2.8 versus 2.9. So um, PPI, CPI, you can say they were both slightly better than expectations. I think that's a fair representation, okay? And it gives these guys the uh, ability to just pass on, on rates, um, raising rates this today okay what else do we got this wetg did a one for 185 reverse split and they're running the stock today because there's really very few shares outstanding we've seen this this movie before okay so if you got in before good for you i did not uh gct is doing a 25 million dollar buyback shell boosted their dividend by uh 15 percent and they're saying oil output will be uh, maintained through 2030. Okay, 
Vodafone is merging with Hutchinson. The stock's up on that. Lumen uh, continues to rally from this Google um, JV or whatever they're doing with Google. Apple hit an all-time high yesterday. Kudos to them. Momentum stock is WISA. That's up on, on, I couldn't find the news. When I say momentum, I mean I can't find news, okay? Um, and HWK had a positive business update. Tesla had 14 days in a row of up stock, okay? The market cap added was 300 billion, roughly equal to the market cap of Merck. Guys, think about that for a minute and think about being in growth stocks versus being in non-growth stocks and how much more money you make in growth stocks in a good market, okay? Freaking Tesla added the market cap of Merck, one of the great companies in the world, okay? And Tesla added that in 14 days. It shows you that the money, you wanna make money on an up market, you have to be in growth stocks and throw caution to the wind because that's, that's how you make money. All right, that's pretty remarkable. Um, anyway, that's Tesla. IVA had a positive trial result. Uh, NEXT developed a framework for building out this LNG plant, plant in Rio Grande. Uh, Plug, which I told you guys I was buying the crap out of, uh, had their, and I told you because they have the analyst meeting today, analyst meeting came out, it's pretty positive. I'm very long the name. Hope some of you guys are still in it. Um, and that's the positive side. On the short side, we have this Logitech. The CEO left abruptly. The CFO left a short time ago. And now the thinking is that they can't meet growth expectations. So who knows? That's why the stock's down seven. Okay, this came out of left field, guys. So people are a little shocked by that. UNH is sending the HMO group down. It's basically elevated um, volumes of urgent, uh, non-urgent surgical care. So they're saying the, the medical core ratio is above the upper band of expectations and they're taking these stocks to the woodshed. Not so terrible. I mean, it's $28, but the stock is 500 bucks. So it is what it is. Okay, so that's uh, UNH. East had a business update, not so good. AHI, when these, they take these shitty stocks, guys, they always come down and probably lower than they began. And AHI is that today. There's a bunch of offerings. CWST, Iron, Cura, NDNT, um, all down on that. CNVS also. Microsoft judge blocked uh, the ATVI Activision deal from closing. So it's got to wait. So they give the uh, Federal Trade Commission time to uh, review. MVIS, mixed shelf offering. Uh, ITI was down uh, on a delayed 10K. And that's really that. Market-wise, I think we're going to have two days. We're going to have today and we're going to have post-Fed. Okay, so, you know, I try to trade the day, then whittle down the positions to something that's manageable and see how the Fed does when it speaks, okay? I do like material stocks, which you know. Uh, I like the EV names. Um, not so fond of the consumer non durables or drug stocks, unless we see these high PE tech names get hit, in which case people will gravitate back to those names, okay? Um, Chinese stocks, I just can't stand, okay? They rally and whatever. They always fail. And th that's my thinking on that. Banks, I think uh, I'm watching the Schwab. I think we had bad news. If this stock doesn't go down, I'm going to buy it. All right. That's my thinking. And that one, HMOs are having a shit day. Um, I'm looking at CVS on the long side, possibly. And that's my story. Okay. So two days, you got to get down, you know, trading will start getting really quiet around 1230 ish or 12, you know, 12 o'clock, maybe a little bit before that. And then we'll see what the Fed does. All right. So that's it for me. I'm going to pass it to my friend uh, Spartan and um, let's make some money, guys. It's all yours, my man. 
Hey, South Beach guys, morning. What's up? What's going on? Let's rip through uh, the morning stuff. Everything's completed. If you guys are new to chat, have you done so? Make sure you click on that Discord link, that's email to you. Pop into chat. It's going to look something a little bit like this. For sure to go to when you guys do come in, disclaimer section, click on that, give it a read, as well as go to the new to chat information section, scroll to the very, very top of that area there. Now, if you guys are uh, uh, new, go through the risk reward first, most important rate. Ratio and trading, I got risk score profiles, calculators, everything you need there to understand how it works and how to apply it. So I think it's definitely uh, extremely useful to go through that section. Continue to scroll down, summary of how this chat works, breaks on all the channels work on the left-hand side, so you can probably navigate the chat throughout the day. Important to know where you be looking. Continue to scroll down the uh, how to read alerts on the options and equity side, breaking down how to read alerts on both sides, pretty straightforward in that regard. Continue to scroll down. Um, Spurn options rules that we use Monday to Thursday in regards to controlling risk, scaling in, scaling out, trading different price contracts, all posted here. Uh, SPX rules that we like to use every single day for the SPX uh, trades posted right there. Continue to scroll down. If anyone with a small account, less than 10K, breaking down. If you have a smaller account, less than 10K, here's some rules, information, discipline you put in place. So you better manage the account. How to pick ideas from an options directly perspective below that. And lastly, high conviction uh, trades posted in the high conviction area when they do make sense. And those trades are pr primarily credit spreads and they do work, um, you know, large majority of the time. Um, so, you know, if you want to pay for the room every single day, you can simply just put one of those on. Uh, and uh, like 95% of the time, but we're, uh, if you guys are in, you know, obviously subject to uh, <laughs> future or whatever, you know, we'll see, we'll see how they work going forward, but uh, they do work a large majority of the time for me, at least. Uh, anyways, pre-market tickers on watch guys, what do we got going on? Uh, you guys, if you're watching YouTube stream, you can simply just pause it and uh, give us a read, give that a read, give that a read, all the other charts, et cetera. Um, let's take a look what we got going on today, guys. So Tesla, Humana, UNH, AMV, TM, and WSA. Tesla gapping up continuation from last day. Humana gapping down and simply the UNH. Uh, UNH um, gapping down on uh, uh, on worries of rising medical costs. AMD bouncing up in continuation from last day. TM gapping up regards to their range on EV news. WSA gapping up on uh, volume. Let's take a look at these names from a technical standpoint intraday. So first two we're looking at today, guys, going to be Tesla, going to be Humana. Have a look. Tesla, 266.70, pivot to the upside today. Uh, that level holds 273.10, 281.83. Unable to hold 256.22 to 247.30 on the downside. Overall, going to be leaning bullish, looking for a continuation push to the upside today if that pivot point's able to hold. Humana, pivot downside, 471.40, unable to hold. Or uh, 63.22 to 454.17, able to hold 480.81, 490.90, 490.63 or upside. Going to be leaning on the bearish neutral side today, looking for a continuation lower if the pivot point's unable to hold. UNH and AMD. So UNH pivot to the uh, downside today is going to be uh, 457.71, unable to hold 449.65, 438.71, able to hold 463.72 to 471.90 on the upside overall on UNH. Going to be leaning bearish, looking for continuation lower today if the pivot's unable to hold. AMD, 127.69, level holds 138.82, 133.30 um, area on the upside, unable to hold 124.91 to 122.87. Going to be leading bullish neutral, uh, looking for a continuation push to the upside today. Let's take a look at TM and WUSA. TM 164.96, level holds 167.77, 1787. Unable to hold 162 on 157.77 uh, on the downside, leaning bullish there. And then the last but not least, WUSA guys, 194 pivot, level holds 265, 353, unable to hold 149, 113 downside, leaning bullish. If we can get back above that uh, 50 EMA, we'll see what happens in that regard. So that's the spy of the fang. Those are the in or so that's the individual names we're looking at. Let's take a look at the spy of the fang. So market guys, obviously we got FOMC today. We'll see what happens in that regard. Right now, um, market's still looking bullish for continuation higher. And uh, if we can get above the pivot, if we can, I think it's going to come in a little bit. 434s. Um, we'll see what happens. 438.23 pivot level holds 441.59. Unable to hold 434.23. Uh, to uh, 431.43. A gap fill area on the daily chart is 433 on the downside. So, okay, we know exactly where we can get to if we do pull back with some major support. But overall, we need bullish if we can get above the pivot at that point in time, or at this point in time, I should say. Apple 183.38, level holds 184.46. Unable to hold 182.17 downside. We're going to be leaning on the uh, bullish neutral side today if the pivot point's able to hold that, or Amazon. Pivot to the upside today is going to be the 
127.10, level holds 128.90, 131.72, unable to hold 125.36, 122.68, down 70, bullish neutral. Let's take a look at Netflix. Pivot to the upside today, uh, 439.90, level holds 458.64, unable to hold 428.89, 417.87. Going to be leaning bullish neutral there as well, if you can get above that pivot. Meta, uh, pivot to the upside, 269.07, level holds 277.05, unable to hold 264.59. Still stuck in that range on the daily. I guess I'm going to be leading more on the bearish neutral side today on this. Um, we'll see what happens with though, of course. And then last but not least, guys, Google pivot to the upside 123.84 level holds 125.25. Unable to hold 122.44 to 120.25 downside. Leaning on the uh, bullish neutral side on Google if it gets above that pivot. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for those names. Let's take a look at the VIX Qs and IWM. The IX. Pivot is going to be the uh, 1438 level holds 1495, unable to hold uh, 1380 to 1345 downside leaning bullish neutral there. QQQs. Uh, 36257 level holds 36566, 36923, unable to hold 35861, 35536, any bullish neutral. And then last but not least, SPX guys, which is going to be similar to the SPY, I'm leaning the same way. Pivot holds, you can get a push higher. But pivot I got here 430, um, 43.56 level holds 43.99. <clears throat> Unable to hold 43.25 on the downside. Again, you know, spy and cues and you know, SBX. Yes, they're extended, but yes, we do have an extension off of news from yesterday, and we will have an extension continued today with more news coming out, which I kind of throw the extension rules out the window when we got that type of extension off of news. We'll see what happens in that regard. Now that's it, my friends. So I actually, I don't think the uh, YouTube stream is actually on today. I think Steve got to throw it on. So let's not worry about that. Um, what I'm going to do, guys, I'm just going to, because I kind of, oh, it is on. Oh, my mistake. I, I, I wasn't uh, aware. I didn't post the link. That's my mistake. Uh, anyways, guys, if you're going to watch the YouTube stream, thanks for popping in. And uh, if you have any questions, you go to SpartanTrain.com. You can sign up there. 